This is insane. Oh. Oh. Oh, mosquitoes, mosquitoes. Tomogamy, Ontario. It's a nature lover's paradise. I have a cottage here. I've canoed almost every river and lake within its boundaries. There are cottages dotted throughout the remote lakes and there are logging roads and access roads winding through the rich and beautiful forest. So you would think that survival here would be easy. Yet 98% of people who end up lost do so within a mile of their own home or cottage. It's not difficult to get turned around and lost forever in a forest as thick and deceptively beautiful as this. I've taken myself into the middle of this wonderful region to attempt to survive in the ways of my original teachings. Survival in the Great Lakes Boreal Forest crossover region. You know, you would think with all of the places around the world that I've survived in, deserts, jungles, the Arctic, even in a life raft on the ocean, uh, surviving out here, Northern Ontario, my own backyard, essentially, would be a bit of a walk in the park for me. Well, we're about to find out. All right, before I do too much or travel too far, I want to do my zone of assessment check. So I'm in the middle of the Northern Ontario bush, and the first zone of assessment is zone number one is my body. And I've got this for clothing. Not much else this time. I've got a bit of an arsenal on my belt here. I've got a, a multi-tool with a flint striker. I've got a belt knife, and I've got a new saw blade that I want to try out my harmonica. So zone of assessment number two is immediately outside my body, which is my backpack. And number three is what's further beyond. And at this point, what I know I have further beyond is a lot of topography. <laughs> Trees, hills, pine needles, and more mosquitoes than any human being could ever count. That's it. Just me and the Northern Ontario bush. Though there's a lot of fresh water around, I've walked in with a small water bottle. Just not much else. Here, I don't feel like the dangers are very many at all. Oh, I know people really worry about bears. I mean, I'd be more worried about a moose in the rutting season anytime. I gotta be real careful I don't just turn myself around in circles. Try to stay walking in a relatively straight line if possible. I and mean, one way to do that is to I'll go around the left side of this tree. Keep moving. Go around the right side of the next tree. Left side, right side. And that can sometimes help to keep me going in a straight line. Another thing I can do is, while I walk, I've got the sunlight, and by the time of the day, I know it's high in the sky. If I keep it in a certain spot on the side of my head and keep walking, keeping it there, then I'm going pretty straight. Well, while I walk, I've been hoping to find maybe a stream or even puddles of water something. I mean, this is, this is Northern Ontario. It's, it's the land of fresh water. I'm finding nothing. But this might be able to help me right here. This is all sphagnum moss. I've been told this has a natural antiseptic in it. And this will be my toilet paper for the time out here. It's actually what native cultures used to use as padding for baby diapers. Mmm. That's a good drink of water. And there's lots of it along here, so I can quench my thirst just by squeezing moss. One stop shopping. My toilet paper and my bottle of water. So 
This plant here is, uh, well, it's not much in terms of being a wild edible. I can't really eat it, but it's still good knowledge to have. It's, uh, it's called gold thread, but it's also called canker root. You can chew on this and keep it in my mouth. Chew, 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 chew. Never swallow, spit it out. And the enzymes of this root work on the cankers and heal them. And it's, it's incredible how well it works, actually. And see, <coughs> oh, mosquito down my throat. <coughs> when you're in a survival situation, sometimes it's not a bad injury that really puts you down. It's uh, something as simple as having a mouthful of ulcers or a stomach ache or a sp just a sprain or something like that. So knowing a few medicinal plants like this can make a big difference in a survival situation. Ah, mosquitoes. Now, if I can find a plant that will repel all these mosquitoes, That'd be helpful. Searching for wild edible plants is a constant in survival. But you have to know exactly what you're looking for. Or you risk sickness, even death. Sometimes uh, the time of year dictates what it is I can eat. This should be a good time of year for berries. But again, in a survival situation, the emphasis is on should be. It doesn't mean it is, and it doesn't mean I'll find them. Some bunch berries here that are Almost starting to get ripe. If I can find some red ones, I've got myself a meal. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, I think I found myself a fast meal here. There's a, a plant called wild cucumber. Another plant called starflower, and they're side by side. And here they are, there's some starflower, but I think I might have found some wild cucumber. If I did, that's a beautiful thing. I'm gonna check this out. It's wild cucumber. <sighs> it looks like I've got myself a meal. I'm really carefully peeling away from the tuber. That's awesome. Oh. And it tastes just like it. Oh, that's good. Mmm. And there's uh, four or five more here. Mmm. It's sweet tasting. That. Yeah. It's delicious. Mm. Mm. It's gotta be wild cucumber. But there's a plant here. It's the same plant. And it looks like a different growth. And I'm not certain, all of a sudden. I haven't seen, really, ever before, a full, mature wild cucumber, right? Just in the books kind of thing. It's been a long time since I've seen one in the wild. And here I am eating one, and it tastes like one, but this part of it, the way it looks like this, I've never seen before. So here's the part that I saw, but then there's this stem that comes up, and these guys, it's probably a wild plant expert looking at it going, yeah, 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 that's wild cucumber, eat away, it's awesome. Or someone going, no, 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 that's the poison of such and such. Don't touch it. But I just went from certain to uncertain. I hate that feeling. Well, I've eaten it now, so I won't eat anymore until I find out how I feel. I've always been a fan, if you have the experience, of mobile proactive survival. Moving on, looking around the next corner. Maybe I'll find a cabin, a vehicle, even a road. Staying put in forest this thick just never seems like the right option to me. Not if I have a choice. Uh, this is yet another way to get some water. No sphagnum moss here, just this punky rotten wood. I'm gonna reach into the center of it here. It's all soaking wet, and this is good water to drink. I can just keep hydrating myself as I walk through the bush, constantly putting liquid into my body because it's, it's hot here. The mosquitoes are bad, the heat's intense, the humidity's thick, but there's not much to drink where I am right now, so this'll do it. Good fresh water.
I keep seeing blueberries here, but unfortunately, I don't see them in season yet. All I see is the plant itself. That doesn't mean it's not useful because I can actually make blueberry tea out of the leaves if I find a way to boil water. So often people think, well, you can just find some berries and live off raspberries and blueberries. Boy, if I was in that area in July or August, that's what I'd be doing. You, you've got to find those big patches of blueberries and raspberries, and they might be many miles in between them. So that's blueberry tea, I guess. I have to always, always think about getting material for fire starting. Now this is good birch bark. This definitely falls under the category of gather it while I see it. I don't want to go all the way around the tree and, and pull off too much and go too deep because that actually kills the tree. But in this case, I'm just taking just the dead stuff that's on the outside, that's all. This way, I can gather the bark I need and feel like I'm not damaging the forest at the same time. I just keep gathering as I go and hope that I don't start throwing up because what I thought was wild cucumber was something else. Like, I'm just traveling through the bush here, but I'm considering where I'm going and how I'm getting there. And I'm not so much as blazing a trail as I'm doing more like a patrol map. So I'm, I'm counting my pacing and I'll, and I'll, I'll count. I mean, in my head, I'm just constantly counting. And I'll get to a certain spot like this here. This is an extremely unique rock. I've walked about all uh, 1,200 paces and after 1,200 paces and knowing that I'm, I'm, I'm heading south from this rock, uh, I can use this and I can start from zero again. So basically from here to the next spot that I find that is really very easy to recognize. That's the key. Okay, so. This time I've gone about 2,500 paces and uh, this big smooth rock face up in here serves as another end mark because I actually am turning to the west a bit. Okay, it's good to know this is here, this rock wall. So that's basically, what did I say? 1,200 paces to the split rock. Go south, 2,500 paces to the big rock wall go slightly west. In this way, I can remember my way back and do my count and keep going. Oh, look at this. Let's see, this is when I wish I knew more about mushrooms because uh, if this was edible, well, that's a nice bulk of food there, but I have no idea. And learning mushrooms is extremely difficult. You have to be shown by an expert. You can't do it with a book at all. The only real mushroom I know that I'm confident picking is the shaggy mane grows in my backyard. The problem with eating mushrooms, if I eat it and I'm wrong, I could die. Very dangerous. Talking about it and knowing it are two different things. This is wandering survival. Pushing onwards, always looking for the right place to spend the night. This is the way it normally goes. Every once in a while, I just find myself in these pockets where mosquitoes are incredibly intense. One interesting phenomenon that's happened with me, mosquitoes, is that over the years of doing survival and guiding, I've been bitten so many times, and I had to remain stoic because maybe I was guiding teenagers or something like that, and I didn't want to have them panicking. And so the mosquitoes, I'd have six, seven mosquitoes on my arms biting me, and there we go. They would just bite and fill up on blood. And then I began to notice after a while that I wasn't getting bites anymore. I mean, nothing, not a single bump. So this guy's gonna bite me, he's filling up with blood right now. Nothing's gonna be there. Nothing to itch, nothing to scratch. She goes on to uh, make more mosquito babies. There she goes, fat with my blood. It's not that the mosquitoes don't drive me insane, they do. But just knowing I no longer have to endure itchy welts all over my body is an incredible psychological comfort. 
just still looking for a place to sit and sleep the night out. I think I've made a drastic error. I should have started looking for a place to be a lot earlier. Maybe even uh, built a shelter. I've just been going and going. It's too late to do a lot of things. I'm just going to find a place to sit out. So I'm getting too tired to do anything else. Surviving like this is kind of like an adventure race. I just don't stop. I keep going. It's actually so much closer to any real lost victim's reality than building elaborate shelters or traps. Not getting myself prepared for tonight was just stupid. I just kept walking until I realized I was walking into the dark. I've got no shelter. And the mosquitoes are just terrible. First night out and I don't know that I'm gonna sleep at all. Ow! Ow. The hell just bit me. That hurt. Mosquitoes just didn't seem this bad during the day. They're intense now. Oh. oh, God. A fire would have been smart, yet I simply overlooked making one. Too busy pushing on in the warm weather. That sounds like rain. That is rain. There's rain coming in. Great. It's just sprinkling for the moment, so. Ow! Right in my eye. Ah. I hear the storm coming. That makes these massive pine trees are like lightning rods. So I'm really sitting in, you know, the worst possible place for lightning coming through. Out in the rain getting drenched, or dry here and getting electrocuted. This is impossible to sleep like this. Lost victims are motivated to keep moving by many different things. Fear, longing to see their family again, even embarrassment. Whatever it takes, sometimes you have to just keep moving. Well, it only rained a little bit off and on through the night. Looks like it's gonna clear up here today too, so. Who knows, this time of year, it, uh, it rains and then it stops and then it's sunny and then it rains again and thunderstorms. You get everything. I'm just gonna keep moving and see what I find. You know, for years, I have traveled with a harmonica, and I've played it at night to uh, bring me comfort and keep me company, especially around the fire. But the actual and real use that I have put it to in any survival situation, especially when I have to go through woods like this, is to play while I walk. Basically, it scares away anything that I don't want to run into. Now, I don't know, you're probably thinking bears, and that's probably true. I don't really want to run into a black bear. 99.99999% of the time, if I see one, he's going to be running like a shot, or she. And I've had them where I've come upon a mother and the cubs run up the tree and the mother takes off and I'm standing at the bottom of the tree looking at the cubs. That's usually what happens with the black bear. That said, I play this harmonica while I walk and I don't have to test my theory. You can see the clearly the there's an opening up there. Now I can see the water from here. So now I can base my travels on the lake, follow the shore, or do what I need to do to get out of here. You come with me. So here's some berries. It's a poisonous look-alike. This is the Clintonia borealis. It looks so much like blueberries. The plant doesn't look like blueberries at all, but if you know what a blueberry looks like, but the berries do, and if you were confused, 
And I've seen people that, that are by this plant. You could try eating it and it's poisonous. All right, this is what I'm hoping to find more of. Bunch berries that are starting to become ripe. Yeah, these are still a little green, but at this stage, I'll eat them. Mm. The bunch berries normally are everywhere in this kind of forest. It's just that I'm a little early on the season, and that's the thing. When it comes to gathering survival food, it's all about the season. People always say, oh, if you go there, you'll just live off of berries. Not if they're not in season, I can't. Mm. Bunch berries. I better get myself set up before it gets too dark. It's gonna be too late otherwise. <sighs> wow, this is thick. I'm, every time I think I'm going through to a clearing, I, uh, I'm not. <laughs> the assumption is that jungles are thick and forests are walkable. Yet sometimes, it's very much the opposite. All right, there we go. This overhang, and knowing that the northwest wind is coming from in behind this rock, this will do the trick tonight. Maybe if I put up a few, a few poles, get a little fire going this time as well, help keep the mosquitoes away. All right, I gotta get busy, because before long that sun's gonna set again. It's one of the reasons why I love having a handsaw like this. Don't get me wrong, an ax is great too. I love having an ax, but an ax is heavy to carry. Okay, that's one. 40 more. You know, the principle behind shelter building, or one of them is to try to use stuff that's in the vicinity to make your shelter. It's, it's the way igloos are made, really. You think, that, oh, they put all the blocks on top of the snow? Nope, the blocks are dug out to make a big hole, and that's half the igloo right there. Then the blocks are put up over top of that hole. You scoop out and put on top. That's some of the, hopefully most of the grunt work done. I'm gonna go up by the rock and take stock and see what I've got. All these branches are just deadly if I walk into them in the night, poke myself in the eye. So you always have to make sure you free your area up of any hazards at all. In this case, all these really sharp branches pointing right at me are hazards. There, clear the area. Well, it's not much. Probably one of the lamest shelters I've ever made, but believe it or not, half of it's made for me because of this rock. So really, I think I'll be fine here if it comes on to rain. And better than that, there'll be some air moving here to hopefully keep the mosquitoes down. That's a big concern for me, because last night was brutal. All right, I wanna get a fire going. This is very much a land flowing with fresh drinkable water, which thankfully takes that need out of the equation of survival. So with water and shelter looked after tonight, I won't sit out in the dark without a fire going. Normally what I would do is I'd go really far and collect my firewood from as far away as possible. As the time goes on, I get weaker and weaker, a little more tired. I don't want to have to go so far to get my firewood. But in this case, I'm moving tomorrow. I can just gather from real close here, all around me. All this stuff sticking in the air, even though it was raining, is nice and dry right off from today's wind. Sun's going down. Getting a fire going is a lot like a cooking show. 
You gotta have all your ingredients laid out. In the birch tree, I found this fungus. See that? This stuff can take a spark. I'm gonna hope that I can make that happen here. I've never been shown how to do this, so I don't even know if this is the right thing to do, but my gut says chew it up a little bit. Look at that, that's amazing. Can't believe how well that works. And I had no idea it was gonna work this well. I've never tried this stuff before. Yeah, I'm just gonna try, I'm just experimenting. Let's try this, let's try breaking a bit off into the cedar bark. Some of the, the coals. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> All right, yeah, now we're talking. This stuff is fantastic, this tinder fungus. Wow, I've never seen anything like that before. All right, so I'm gonna save this tinder fungus because that's just awesome. This is uh, some other birch fungus, but the beauty of this is it's said anyway that the smoke from this fungus helps to keep mosquitoes away. So I'm just gonna let this guy hover right there. This is gonna be a much better night than last night. The small plastic bottle I've been using to collect water can now be put to a second important use. One that for many lost victims, if they knew this technique, could save their life. Well, let's try this. I have no wire, no string, but I usually, when I get out into the wilderness, make it so that my belt is actually a rope. I've done that for years, and I can say that has come in handy more times than I can count. Here goes nothing. All right, so I'm just gonna put some blueberry leaves in there now. Get that back on the flames. Now, we watch water boil. I'm surviving in the Canadian northern forest, where from one hour to the next, I could go from a manageable existence to a horrific endurance test. This may not look it. And I might not feel it in a couple hours, but right now, it's actually comfortable. Just by simply setting up under this rock, the warmth of a fire, and to have the mosquitoes gone, and then combine that with hot water that I've been able to boil in plastic. It's unbelievable. Mm. Oh man, that's good. Whew. Having hardly slept at all in a couple of days. This night's gonna help. The danger of settling into a place that is kind of okay for survival is that I can wait too long before I make my next move, and my energy becomes depleted too much to head out. So I'm going to keep moving. In the course of moving on, I can make things much worse for myself, too. Everything in a survival situation is an important judgment call. Oh, 
Okay. Oh boy. I see bear scat here. And that's precisely why I play the harmonica while I go through. I'm gonna make it to the clearing. I can see the clearing and water. Ow! Ow! Oh, hey, hey, hey. That looks good. I see water. <laughs> I see food. Now I see why. I'm starting to see different signs of animals. Everything comes down here to feed, including me. <laughs> oh, man. You won't believe what I just found. I wouldn't expect to find this down here. And I did. And, and there's lots of it. Oh, I gotta show you this. This is, this is one of my favorite finds when it comes to looking for food in the northern forest like this. This is called creeping snowberry. It's these tiny little white guys. You just lift up the plant like this to expose the berries. Mmm. Oh, what a score. So this is my first little treat of the marsh. My second bigger treat was out there. The cattail has two benefits both as a food source and also as a fire starter. It grows throughout the world, and it's an incredible filter of pollution or otherwise contaminated water. But the best thing about it for survival is that it usually grows in abundance. <clears throat> There's the kind of chunk I'm looking for right there. Peel the layers away. Oh, yeah. Now we're talking. This one's nice and tender. All right, I'm going to uh, keep eating more of these cattails and get myself filled up. There's a lot of them, easy to grab. Mmm. And tasty. And this, this is super calorie efficient eating in a survival situation. It's being able to come to a place like this. Just pick, eat, pick, eat, pick, eat. The creeping snowberries were just a huge bonus. All right, I'm gonna take the next hour or so and just sit here and eat, and then uh, head back through and see what's up around the corner. Hmm. You know what, this would be a good place to come back as well. There's lots of snails. Snails are small, they don't feed you a lot. You'd have to gather quite a few, but there are a bunch here, and easy to gather. They're just, just on the rocks, just slightly under the water. Mm, this is good. I'm gonna get some more. Oh, there should be a great place to get frogs, but I'm not really... Oh, I see some, but not seeing many. Not like I used to when I was a kid. This is just really weird. I, bend, I, I see something on the ground. I bent down to pick it up. Yeah. One wild blueberry. It's absolutely a blueberry. And there's not a single blueberry plant around me. So just here, in the middle of the swamp, there's one, one wild blueberry laying on the ground. How does that happen? I don't know, I guess maybe a bird had it in its beak and was flying overhead and dropped it. Dropped it down for me. Oh. Ooh, sinking in. Ah, f <sighs> Drop the camera in. The one camera that's not waterproof. That's what I want. That's an amazing fire starter. What do you look for in a survival situation? Do you try to find shelter, food, water? No. What you really are on the search for is a way out. Rescue, salvation, human activity, anything to take you out of your misery, because there is nothing about surviving 
that isn't miserable. After a while, you know you could be getting close to something when you start to see uh, signs of humans. Think of this old junk lying around here. Coming up to the edge of the shore here. Again, just looking around. You gotta be kidding me. It is. Check this out. Huh. Look at that. Unbelievable. Now, I myself have stored more than one canoe in my lifetime. My father and I used to hide boats in different places, hold fishing lakes and spots that, we, that were our favorites. And uh, I've probably come across at least four or five boats and canoes in my lifetime, just traveling around, being in the bush. And here we go. No more bush hiking for me. I wonder if there's a paddle, though. I don't see one. I'm just gonna angle this so that uh, I can hide from the rain if it comes in. It's be a nice sheltered spot. You never know in a survival situation what you're gonna find. A cabin, a cottage, a big cave or ow, rock overhang. In this case, a big old canoe. I don't have a paddle. Really tough to make a paddle. But what I can make is a pole. If you want to rain now, you can. Don't bother me. Whenever I find signs of human activity, it makes me feel more up. The energy from the find is a psychological boost and motivates me to get active. I think still one of my favorite things with tinder is mixing and matching all the different tinders together. Birch bark, pine needles, sometimes cedar bark. But to set all of this off, it's gonna be the cattail fluff. The trick to the cattail is getting it as fluffy as possible. The fluffier I can make it, the better. The more likely it will be to take a spark. <laughs> Look at that. Now, come on, catch, catch, catch. There we go. The birch bark takes the flame from the cattail. The cattail's already gone out. The birch bark takes the flame. Pine needles come over top. So far tonight, I'm getting lucky with the mosquitoes. They're not too bad. Not yet. And the rain's held off. There's a phenomenon that happens here. I call it the 10 minute warning. Depending on what the temperature is like, you get a situation where uh, you start to hear this, this hum, this buzz in the distance. If that happens, look out. Because within almost 10 minutes exactly, you're about to be swarmed by mosquitoes. And what it is, I, 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 my understanding is that the mosquitoes are actually, you know, they're all sitting on their little branches and leaves and blades of grass, and they actually are warming up their body temperature, getting ready. And then they take off on their hunt for blood. And when you hear that 10 minute warning, it's gonna be a bad night. I haven't heard it yet. If I'm going to hear it, it's going to be soon. I can just hear the mosquitoes are buzzing and they're, they're echoing. I don't know how many there are, but it sounds like a million because of the canoe. Oh. Oh. This is insane.
still raining. It rained pretty much all night, and I just tucked in here. The good news was with the rain, every time it was hard, the mosquitoes would go away. So I had this time where I would sleep more while it was raining. But uh, then when it would stop raining, the mosquitoes would come in again and wake me up. It was pretty intense this morning. So awesome rain shelter. Not so good for the mosquitoes. I got to make my way out of here, figure out how I can maneuver this canoe in the water. I'm going to need to make a pull. So the reason why I want to take all this bark off and make this as smooth as possible, because if I'm pulling in rapids or anything like that, then I don't want to be slicing my hand open on points and things sticking out from the wood. I want this to be nice and smooth. Makes it a lot easier to work with. One of the reasons why I like mobile survival so much rather than just sitting still is you, you end up finding a lot more th things that can be advantages for your very survival. And the thing is you've got to start it early before you start getting tired. And in this case, come upon a canoe, those types of finds are everything in a survival situation. And they don't happen when you're sitting still. So there we go. That's my pole. And I'm sure it will do the trick. Let's get out of here. Another hour or two of rain, and finally, I get a break in the weather. And now it's possible to move on. It's nice that there's a big long rope on this thing too. Let's see if she floats. Perfectly. From my knowledge of this region, I know that if I head upstream, I can make it to a road. And sometimes, you have to take the harder path to make it to safety. The path of least resistance is not always the best direction to travel. There's only one way to do this, to break one of my own major important rules, and that is I'm going to go in the water with my boots, get my feet wet. Sometimes to get to where you have to go, you gotta break the rules. And away we go. It can be very dangerous to allow myself to get wet during survival. If I can't get out to safety or get dry before the night, then I run the risk of chilling down to the point of hypothermia. whole trick to pulling is you to get in a rhythm and then have the pole kind of stay up against the back of the canoe as you shove it into the ground underneath and it keeps you straight. Wilderness survival travel must always be slow and steady. One small slip on a rock and a broken or badly strained ankle can cause death. One dunking in the water can lead to hypothermia. 
One turn to the east when I should have turned to the west can change a route to safety, to a trip into hell. And yet all the safety consciousness and all the tough decisions have to be employed while having had little sleep or food, which only serves to reiterate the fact that nothing can be done quickly in a survival situation. Fortunately, in an area like this, the beauty that surrounds me serves to calm the mind and spirit, making survival even more possible. There's a flat, straight clearing right across up there that to me looks like a road. And I know these roads in this area walk my way out to the highway and home. Yeah, that's what I wanted to see, the road. That's enough of this pulling up the river. I'm getting out of here. Even only a mile from your cottage or home, you can quickly find yourself lost and alone. Then the fight to survive begins. All the while you know that there are roads and buildings somewhere. And so onwards you push, sometimes towards safety, sometimes into certain death. And too often, only miles from your own bed. It happens every year. It happened this year and it'll happen to someone next year. Prepare yourself for survival when in the wilderness always, so it doesn't ever happen to you.